up the sky Of days when life for me meant holding on Hoping that I would be strong Always needing more to see That somehow I would surely find my way by faith that see a brighter day. Don't know 
Remember the protocol, we can only take 16 under the tent, but others can stand without the tent and they are part of it. So we'd like to take a point to third up. Do we have 15 somebody? Somebody's alright?
within the crisis to pay your last respect and to say to the Turner family, in spite of, we are still with you, and that is so good. We come to lay to rest our brother, our friend, father, grandfather, you name it, and we're going to do so in fine style. I realize that some of us are under a nice little tent here, and some of you are out there in the burning heat. Well, trust me, I will not have you in it for too long, all right? So we're going to proceed. Thank God. For all our days have passed away in your wrath, we finish over here like a sign. The days of our lives are seven years, and if by reason of strength they are eighty years, yet they are both in only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The silver-haired head is a crown of glory. If it is found in the way of righteousness, he who is sown to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules the spirit than he who takes a city. Let me take time out to um, acknowledge the presence of the ministers who are with us here. We have Graham Emmons, Whittingham Farmer, and I'm yours truly, Irville Campbell. Sister Turner, we're happy to see you standing strong and standing tall. God richly bless you. We're going to move, and we thank God for allowing us good weather also. So we're going to go to the heart of service, and the first song on the program is Some Glad Morning We Shall See Jesus in the Hair Coming After You and Me. Joy is ours to share. After we are through with that, then we're going to have prior by the by Brother Turner's pastor, the Bishop Whittingham, is going to open us in prayer. Some glad morning we shall see. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the hair. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. It is for the jubilee yonder in the sky. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall Savior, you're 
and your grace that we are here oh God this afternoon hallelujah to put away the body of your son your servant who is now being with you Amen. father in heaven I thank you God for everything here and now and thank you God for leading us throughout the rest of this service I pray during this time Lord God that no one will be broken down physically in the name of Jesus and mentally I pray will touch God, all the family and relatives of the deceased. Yes. In the name of Jesus, strengthen Amen. them, Lord. Give them courage. Hallelujah. Bless the moderator. In the name of Christ Jesus. And everyone that will be saying something, Lord, let it be a blessing, O oh God, to the living. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are depending on you as we acknowledge you for direction. In the rest of the service, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, you might have a program. Let me say, this program was organized for a, a church service, if I may say. But being here, we'll have to make some adjustment. So, you don't need to correct me. <laughs> I'm having a different program from yours, all right? So at this time, we're going to move into some tributes. You have your program. You will see who will be taking part in the tribute. Um, so here we go. We're going to have Bishop Graham coming to us, followed by Bishop Emmons, followed by the Bishop Whittingham again. Thank you, Pastor. Shall we worship the Lord? Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Can we worship the Lord? Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise God. God is such a good God. And I want to see our protocol observed today because I've lost a friend. A real, real good friend. But let me give a word of sympathy to Sister Turner. And all the relatives and friends of Brother Turner. I have known Brother Turner for some years now. And I don't need a script to talk about Brother Turner. And I don't think nobody who knew Brother Turner, he was no ordinary man. First of all, Brother Turner was a man of God. He was a man of God. And when I think about Brother Turner, there's one scripture came to mind. 
The Bible says, lay not your treasure on earth, but lay it in heaven. Amen. Brother Turner has laid his treasure in heaven. And now he is at a better place. Brother Turner was a very kind person. If, you're a, if, you, if you knew this man, you will agree with me that he was very kind. He was a people person. He put others ahead of himself. I remember there were times when I would visit and I would call and say, Brother Turner, I'm going to drop off something at the house for the church. And I I expect to spend more than about five minutes maximum or ten minutes. Minutes turn into hours. And hours turn into hours. Because that's the kind of man he were. Yes. You know, we would talk and he would share his heart to me and I would share my heart to him. You know. But this man loved God. Amen. He had a love for God. And now I can say, sisters and brothers, Let's, we are not here to weep like those who have no hope. Because we all, we all want to go to heaven. It's just that he has gone there before us. You understand? But we're going to meet again. We're going to meet again. So, Sister Turner, on behalf of our prayer ministries and my family, and to the Turner's family and ministers and well-wishers, let me say, um, we grieve with you. Your sorrow is our sorrow. And this is not a loss. This is a gain for those of us who have hope in Jesus Christ. It said, Earth, earthly loss, but heaven gains. May the Lord bless you as we continue to pray one for another. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise God. God. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. Um, but a turnout is a good man. I know this man two years now. And this man teach me a lot of stuff. And this man is a man of Love, peace, joy, and happiness. And Brother Turner is a man I like foolish. <laughs> yes. Anything I will go wrong, that man I tell you straight in a grown corner. And then, when I know Brother Turner, that um, I come in Green Pond at the church. And here is the one that built green pond. And any man you see that build the house of God is a good man. Amen. And he said to me that, Preacher, I wonder if good things can come out of Calvary. Because he was saying that the people them now come out the way they're supposed to come out. And there's a time he kind of feel discouraged. And I said to him, listen my man, God time in different and for retirement. And he lived to see that green pond, the church that the Lord lay on his heart to build, come to reality. Amen. Amen. And he feel good about it. Amen. And this is my few words I have to say this afternoon. Brother Turner, let your soul rest in peace. And be of the family, just be encouraged. God be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen brother. Amen. 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 Bishop. Amen.
I'm here again. I remember some times ago, my family and I went to a place called Cross County in New York, one of the shopping area. And while we're in the place, I was tired and getting weary. Because you know when you go with ladies, they can really do shopping. And I was getting weary. And I said I need to encourage myself. And I said to my son, everybody that work in this place, the name is T. And he said, Daddy, oh, you know. I said, I can prove it to you. And I went to a man that works there. And I said, Mr. T, where is the jackets? And he said, over there. The son looked at me. He said, Daddy, oh, you know. He said, I prove it to you. Everybody that work in here, Mr. T. <laughs> so I went to a second one and I said, Mr. T, where is the cashier? He said, over there. The son looked at me. And I said, I can prove it, another one to you. And then I done. I saw another one. I said, Mr. T, where, what time do you close? And he told me the time. And my son started to laugh at me. <laughs> because he understand what I was doing. And, but, among the Mr. T's, this is the real Mr. T. This is the real Mr. T. Some call him Sir T. Some call him... JT, some call him Brother T, but this man is the real Mr. T. Hallelujah. And I met this man in um, 2010 when he was invited to the congregation by Sister Gray. And when he came, he and his wife, Sister Turner, I led them to the Lord Jesus Christ in repentance. And then they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I remember I was asking for a donation from each member, $20. And he said, Pastor, I will give $500. And my wife will give $500. And I said, thank you, sir. And some of the people maybe could not give a $20. But their money covered those who could not. Or help. And from thence, he started to worship and continue with the Lord Jesus Christ. He continued the doctrine and the fellowship of the saints before he decided to stay here in Jamaica. And God moved upon his heart. God moved upon he and his wife's heart. Two of them worked together. And God moved their heart, and they came together, and they built this structure where we are now at Green Pond. To God be the glory. Amen. He is very kind. I learned so much from Brother Turner. I learned so much from him. And I will never forget many of the things that I've learned from him. He's a good man indeed. He's a caring man indeed. He's a loving man indeed. And many people are standing here right now have been helped by him. Amen. Before he came to the church, he has been a good man, sharing his blessings Amen. with others. But good work cannot save anybody. For by grace are we saved, not of works that any man should boast. But after you accept Christ Jesus, you must continue to do good work. Amen. Amen. Because the work follow you. Amen. And so he have been doing good works before he got saved and good works after he got saved. Amen. Hallelujah. And it happened that this man blessing people near and far. And I want to say that Brother Turner blessings does not last. According to Revelation chapter 14 verse 13. It says, blessed are the dead that die in Christ. For the rest, I paraphrase it, for the rest from the labors, for their works do follow them. I heard Brother 
Graham said, he is in heaven. And I heard somebody said, not yet. But the Bible says, when a man die, his body goes back to the earth. And his spirit goes back to God. Amen. Wherever God is. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And so I'm saying here as I close. That some of you may be crying and mourning. But you need not to cry and mourn. You need to cry for yourselves. Amen. And mourn for yourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. And so Brother Turner rests from his labor. Amen. And his work is following him. Amen. Wherever he is now. I want to believe. According to the, 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 the parable. Huh. He's in Abraham's bosom. Amen. Wherever that symbolic may be. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, as we come to see the last respect of Brother Turner, I want to say that you need to repent. Amen. Those of you who are not, and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want to share this joke I remember with Brother Turner. He told me, Sometimes ago, every time I remember it, I laugh. He said, Sometimes ago, it is said that they, a man coming from England to raise Annie Palmer, the old witch of Rosal. Anybody ever hear about it? And he said, He decided to go. And he said, In those days, the amount of plane from Canada, America, all over, they couldn't land at Montego Bay. They have to keep on circle. Until the other plane left. And he said they were walking in the bush of Rosal. The crowd was large because Annie Palmer is going to be risen. And this man came and he said, Somebody somehow decided that they want to go up front and take a shot cut through the bush and step on a cow. And he said, when they call real in the night, everybody start to run. People start to cry. Come off for me, come off for me, come off for me. When I turned, I said, he was there, he was running and him drop. And he said, when they reach home, everybody have two different foot of shoes. <laughs> because I never forget that joke that Brother Turner gave to me. I learned so much from this man of God. Yes. And may soon rest in peace. God bless him. Amen. And his good works follow do follow him. And when the Lord shall return with his reward, then he shall be rewarded. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I would like to say Praise something God. to the members of the family. If I don't see any family members here that are speaking on behalf of my father. For he is my brother and my nephew and nieces and nephews all over. I've come all the way from England quarantine for 14 days for this particular one day mm. but it matters none how many days I sat waiting to speak and to see my father I was with him on the 3rd of January this year because I made it my duty to be with him for New Year's Day while he was there in New York trying his very best to keep going and that was my father my father, passionate, fearless, honorable, stoic, loving, caring man of faith. My protector, my defender, the master of his own ship on earth, and always putting his family first. I was written, when I wrote this, I said, this church will stand here. Well, we're not in the church, but the church built there in Green Pond. I had the pleasure and the honor of being there. I went there with my father. There's not many there in the congregation, but I sat with him. And it was a beautiful thing to see his accomplishment. You know, he was, it was the last thing, vision he had to oversee and build. He was indeed a master builder of many homes on this island in Jamaica. Uh, you know, if he was well educated, gone to the point, he could have been an architect. Because he was able to create and design buildings, providing work for others to, who he trusts to do a good job. 
And he was that kind of man. I would say that kind of guy. I was looking out for people, providing. I've never been with my dad out in the street and go, who are this? Who are that? He was always handing it out. Amen. Handing it out, my dad. Now, between him and his wife, they were blessed to have more than just shelter in this world. Mm -hmm. More than shelter in this world. But today his legacy will be us, his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren. And I pray God will you help us to uphold the Turner name, following his example, faith in God, the love and care of family, kindness to others, self-respect, and self-control. That's what my father told me. Hold your temper, hold it down. Hold it down. God will take care of that. It's in the part of hand. And as long as God allows me to live, my father, he will always be alive because I am half of him and his children. I left this Jamaica when I was nine years old. My dad sent me to England to my mommy for a better life. Ten years later, I was blessed to make the trip back to see my dad again. During that time, he would always send me a birthday cake. He got me salsa off the road to be. Unbelievable. And I post a lot of money with birthday every up until the age of 17. Now remember, I left at nine. This man knew where I was and he was prepared to make sure that I was okay. Because that's the kind of guy he was, make yes. sure that people were okay. Amen. When I thought of how old, you know, enough, when he thought I was old enough to look after myself and he was now going to marry, because he wasn't married at the time, and be a respectable married man. That man really cared. Through times to times and things, that those times and things that changed, he allowed, he always let me know he was still in reach. That meant the world to me because he could always easily have moved on and forgotten about me. So I held up, I held on to that love, that knowing my dad cared about me. And when I was able, nothing could stop me from coming back to find him. He went to Florida, I went there. He went to New York, I was there. Jamaica, I was there. We sit on and talk on about everything and anything. He told me everything. Right to the last drop, I know everything about my father's heart and how he felt and what was going on in his life. He was so wise, so encouraging, saw through every situation and always had a solution, if not. Then a kind word of acceptance when things were beyond human reach. On his veranda there in Carl Garden was a haven of long chats, reasoning, laughter, just sitting quietly watching the world go by enjoying a cool breeze in the late evening. Very special and amazing, nice times I had, and easy. It took me to meet family members, Uncle Harry, rest his soul, down there in Savlamar, cousins on his mother's side, Julia Greed, in Little London there. I think family, I don't know if they're here. We traveled all over together over the years on this island in his faithful Toyota Corolla. My goodness me, that's something with a father pocket. So old. But it was going, it was not going to break down because dad knew how to make things work. He knew how to make things work. You know, my last happy conversation was the 22nd of June. 22nd of June on my, on my birthday this year. My dad was back in hospital in New York. He was there for a while. It was my birthday and I needed to reach him. I called my brother Robert. Robert. I'm just checking, is it possible because I never wanted to disturb his rest. He was, he was struggling a little. He was struggling. Robert reassured me my dad would pick up his cell phone, all charged and by his bed. So before the night ended and before it closed out, I called dad. Hello, my darling daughter, dear. Happy birthday and may you live to see many, many more. People, I'm telling you, he was sounding so bright, so happy and so full of good cheer. It was almost midnight in England, and I didn't want to keep him talking too long. Just, I, didn't want, I just wanted to hear his voice. I went to sleep with a smile on my face and joy in my heart. So glad to hear him sounding so well and cared for in that hospital. Travel home, dear darling sweet man. Home over yonder. A home prepared by our Heavenly Father. No more pain. And I pray we shall meet again in a sweet by and by, where we meet on that beautiful shore. Love you, Dad. I love to call you my dad. Thank you, Lord, for giving him to us. 
that you're safe now with the saints in glory. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Amen. Give her a hand. Give her a yes. hand. Give her a hand. Amen. Amen. I love where she said that is gone, but still here because they are here. Yes, they are very, very much a part of this. Bless the Lord. Do we have a uh, Clive Mullins here? Do we have Clive Mullins? He's coming. He's coming. Unfortunately, Mr. Mullins cannot be here. His mom is actually in the hospital, and um, our prayers going out to her. She's well, she's not doing that great, but it is still nice to her. So, Clive, um, family friend was supposed to do the eulogy, so I will read it on his behalf. This was done by our cousin, Dr. Regina Turner, who had asked Clive to read it. Eulogy for jo Jocelyn Roy Turner. Members of the clergy, family, etc. It is indeed an honor for me to deliver, uh, you, know, you got to see with me because this yes. is so fine and I have to discuss it. It is indeed an honor for me to deliver the eulogy on behalf of the family. Before I continue, I would like to offer my sincere condolences to the entire Turner family. And on their behalf, thank you all for coming out to show your support to the family. Jocelyn Roy Turner, what would you call it? Maybe Dada as a child, Dad, Uncle Jocelyn, Uncle JT, JT, Grandpa, Grandfather, Mr. Turner, my friend, something else. He was lovingly called so many names by so many people. He was born on August 12, 1934 the fourth child to the union of Clarence Turner, Clarence Arthur Turner, and Julia Green in the district of Stonehenge, St. James. Of his nine siblings, he is survived by his youngest sister, Patricia Turner Glenn. That's her right there, my aunt. Only one oh, turn of <laughs> surviving. <laughs> the African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, was woven into the fabric of Jocelyn's upbringing. He had an entire community of people separate and apart from his immediate family. Immediate family members with whom he interacted. As a result of this, he gained a wealth of experience and grew up in a safe and healthy environment. As a child, he lived in close environment with his maternal grandmother, his aunt, Ella, Angus, Dosha, Matty, and Coletta, along with his uncles, Don and brother. They were a closely knit family. His grandmother and some of his aunts spoke native African language and Spanish. Both his aunt Ella and grandmother traveled to Cuba frequently prior to the Cuban revolution. JT was raised like many earlier rural families, the fourth child of 10. He had brothers at the end, steering him. Alongside his immediate siblings, he forged lifelong friendship with numerous cousins, young and old. He attended school at Stonehenge Mission House School and church as a child. 
He was an ardent Sunday school attendee. In those days, most young men saw themselves becoming trades, tradesmen. His drive to become a tradesman took him from the comfort of home to seek a job as an apprentice in Westmoreland, where his older brothers lived. He quickly learned that apprentices were not paid but had to pay for or work for free during that period. He instead secured a job with Jackson, Williams and Son, a Chinese establishment in South Lamar, where he picked up some of their language. Some of their language. Having saved enough money, he ventured into Montego Bay, which had become a popular spot for young people back then. There he obtained a job with Jamaica Telephone Company, where he worked and learned the skills of a telephone technician. He quickly became a master of the PBX system and was promoted as one of their senior telephone technicians. He was the biological father of five children, Robert, Ruby, Elroy, Twin Faye, and Frederick. Frederick um, expired before that. And Faye sitting right here. And you all met Ruby. And you all know me, I think. Elroy. opportunities were endless. He earned well financially and was never a selfish person. JT realized that he was one of the most, the most fortunate of his siblings. Cousins, friends, and co-workers had never abandoned them. He would always try to visit them. He helped some of them to obtain a job with the telephone company or community. He would visit the sick and shut in with a little something, as he would always call his gift to them. It was always fun and excitement when he would gather his brother and sister, cousins and other relatives and would organize visits to other family members. JT was keenly aware that close family, when given a chance, to meet up, cook, eat, talk, and fellowship together forge special bonds for life. He adored us all and encouraged this constantly. It was amazing to hear him speak of his youthful years. It was fun to hear him recite some of the words and phrases that we learned in Spanish and Chinese up to last year, January. He was incredibly happy and supportive young of the younger journey. He encouraged every one of us to be the best in whatever we did and was very elated when he would hear of our achievements. Despite his ailing health, one could hear the joy in his voice when he was told that the young Turners had formed an annual Turners family reunion. He was present at the inauguration of the first reunion. We, the young turners, are in the process of building a family tree and pledge to carry on this tradition in his and our other ancestors' honor. In his most productive years, he lived for others and took on many challenges, which included assisting in care of his ailing mother, brother, sister, and other relatives, organized road trips to visit family, was present at the drop of a hat to counsel, to lead emotional or psychological support. Married his father, Pauline, and gave her his support while he attended nursing school in Kingston. Sold his gallant motor car for 12,000 Jamaican, added an additional 2,000, and bought a plot of land at Carl Garden for 14,000 Jamaican dollars. Dumped two truckloads 
of Don Tyler. During recruitment of nurses to the USA in the early 1980s, Jocelyn migrated to New York. His wife and adopted son. Having land in New York, he returned to his job at telephone company briefly took early retirement and returned to New York. In New York, he worked as a security guard at Brooklyn College. And, and he, I, I saw a picture of him at that, and that's one of his sites. <laughs> I was like, that's not bad. Yes, you would be. Brooklyn College, for a short period. Before obtaining a job as a telephone technician, the two tech as such of Bella Jackson. He and his wife pooled resources together and bought two homes in New York and completed the house in Carver. The pain created by watching his health deteriorate over the past few years was a lot for us to endure. Only God really knew the extent of the mental, physical, and emotional pain that he endured during his final imaginations were not powerful enough to phantom what he saw. Because of the pandemic, we were not allowed to visit him, but spoke to him via telephone. And got updates on his contact from Robert, George, Pauline, and Ruby. We are comforted by his strong belief and trust in God, with whom he had a good relationship. Irving Berlin says, the song is ending but the melody lingers on. This quote reminds me of JT. Even though he is no longer with us, we were all blessed with his presence in our lives. He had an amazing life. He grabbed the bull by its horns, set goals, and made things happen. That's why he was a su successful entrepreneur, a fantastic family man, and a leader in his community. Even though he is known for his accomplishments, I would like to tell you about another side of Uncle Jackson. He was one of the kindest and most gentlemen I've ever known. I would like to end this eulogy by quoting Christian Jesse's poem. Let me go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no right in a gloom filled with gloom. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not for long, and not beat your head for it low. Remember the love that once you shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey we all must take, and each must go alone. All part of the master plan has set the way to grace. When you are lonely and sick at heart, go to the friends you know. Laugh at all the things you used to do. Miss me, but let me go. It's hard to turn the page when you know someone won't be in the next chapter. But the story must go on. Rest in peace, JT. In morning, morning are his children, Robert. Ruby, Elroy, and Jay. Wife, Pauline, adopted son, Adrian. Sister, Patricia. Grandchildren, great-grandchildren, nieces and nephews, cousins, and friends. It's hard to turn the page when you know someone won't be in the next chapter. But the story must go on. Rest in peace, Jay. Thank you. Amen. 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 Enough respect, brother. Enough respect. <laughs> And if time was on our hands, we could have other people saying many, many different things. No, we're not, no I don't think we can go any further. Time is not on our side, and I'm, I'm getting other here, uh, person talking in my ear here that is concerned. Miss me and let me go. Life well lived. The page will continue turning. We're going to have this scripture coming to us from 
1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 68, George Turner. You see George here? shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death Just lift your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. We want to give God all the glory and all the praise for having brought us together in this fashion. Let me at this time greet the moderator, Bishop Chamber the members of the clergy, Bishop Whittingham, uh, Minister Hemmings, Minister Graham here. I want to just big up all the Turner's family. I am not going to go into my saying of Turner, because if, if I should begin, there will be no, no end to it, because we have been together for so long, and there's so many things about him. I would have to write a book about Don't worry, because I'm going to write it. Oh, okay. Whoa. All right. So, be because of the time constraint, we will sort of understand some of the things. One thing I want to say was my friend. Great, amazing man. Amen. And, uh, oh God, let me just go further. I want to just touch your heart for a couple of minutes on a particular topic. And it's called, We Shall Be Changed. Amen. It's taken from the book of Job, chapter 14, and verse 14. 
it's a question of heart. If a man dies, shall he live again? The question was answered. Yes, all the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. You believe in the change? Yes. You better believe it because God has promised us that we shall be changed. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this few words. We pray right now for a special anointing. Come down in a special way. Mop, mop, the dark clouds, the demonic forces that may be hanging around now. Give us a word of comfort and cheer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Man was destined to live forever. Hallelujah. According to Genesis chapter 1, we find out the cause of the intrusion of sin. God pronounced death upon all men. Is that amen? Amen. amen. But through sin, you know what happened, and disobedience altered all that as a consequence of Adam's fall, death is pronounced upon all living things. Yes. Not only human life, but the plant kingdom and the other lower animals as well. There is no getting away from this. Hallelujah. You know what the Bible says? Hallelujah. We can only live on this earth for maximum amount of years. Right. According to the moderator, yes. he read from the book. Yes. Hallelujah. And I hear that don't care how you're pretty or how you're handsome or how you're wealthy and how poor you are. There comes a time according to Job, he says that we brought nothing into this world and certainly we shall take nothing out. Somebody lift your hand and give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Well, let me reinforce this to everyone. Adam. Adam lived for 930 years. Yet he died. Hallelujah. Adam's son, Seth, he lived for 912 years, but he died. Yes. Amen. Canaan lived for 910 years, but he died. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jared also lived for 962 years, but he died. Enoch. Lived for 365 years, but he did not die. Bible said he was translated. Am I right, Bishop? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody help me preach here for the next few minutes. All right. Methuselah. Methuselah. The longest liver. Lived for 969 years, but he still died. Why he died? Because it is appointment that unto men wants to die, but then cometh the judgment. Lift your hands and praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. David, when it reached to David, it dropped significantly. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. That David said, teach us. Oh, somebody help me preach up. Teach us to number our days and to apply our heart unto wisdom. The bishop read it. He said the days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength we may live what? Over that. So teach us to number our days and to apply our heart unto wisdom. Somebody praise him this afternoon. Somebody praise him this afternoon. Hallelujah. 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 The period of existence, in that period of existence, we should do all the good we can. Yes. Am I? Love Amen. people. Yes. Amen. Amen. Worship God. Yes. 
Praise God. Lift up the name of Jesus. Do your duty as a good soldier. For as the night follow the day, sooner or later, we big finger drop down into the middle of where we Amen. So while you're existing on this world, make sure so you keep your eye upon the eastern sky. Because believe you me, redemption. Somebody praise God again. Somebody praise God again. Somebody praise God again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't have to worry as long as we are wrapped up and tangled up in Jesus Christ. We are all right. Somebody say, safe in the arms of Jesus. Safe on his gentle breath. Lift your hands and give him a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. While we get what we can and can what we get, remember. Oh, hallelujah. Remember that Jesus requires of us. Amen. Oh, though man, you are a gospel man. You have taught me what we should do. You know the scripture. That we should know, show mercy. Can you help me now? Show mercy. Walk good with thy God. Live humble. Amen. And make sure we don't forget our brothers and sisters. Pull up those who are leaving behind and bring them with you. JT has done his part. Oh, JT has done his part. He can tell because I have been a recipient of his goodness. We're not going to that, we don't have time for that. But what I'm trying, the steps of a good man is ordered by Almighty God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. I hear Jesus said to the disciples, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Amen. Don't worry about JT. JT is safe in the arms of Jesus. Amen. Don't worry about him. For him can't hear. If he was all right, everything all right. I'm preaching to those who are still alive. Amen. We're talking to those that are still alive. I hear Jesus said in Luke 175, Bishop, say, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Amen. I just discriminate whoever you are. Somebody praise God again. Somebody praise God again. Oh, give me four or five more minutes and I close right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may say, if a man die, shall he live again? The answer is yes. yes. Somebody says, Bishop, in the midst of life, there is death. But hear what Bishop Palmer says, in the midst of death, there is life. But Jesus is alive. And Jesus is alive. I hear him said to Martha at Lazarus burial. Amen. Come on, Martha. Dry up your tears. Dry up your tears. Martha said, Lord, of four days in dead, I won't come back. But Jesus, let me tell you already, let me tell you again, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, no, he will die. Hallelujah. Thank you, sister. May the close up, may the close up. I hear it all so set in Corinthians 15, 51. Paul challenged them, Bishop. Yes. For they didn't believe in the resurrection. Yes. But Paul said, oh, no, idiot. But if you know Jesus any at all, you must know the resurrection. Yes. If you understand Jesus at all, you must know that there is going to be a resurrection. Yes. That's why the writer said, if a man die, he shall certainly live again. Yes. Here Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall 
every chain in the moment in the sleeping of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet shall sound and the end shall be raised in corruption for this mortal shall have put on immortality and this
we're going to have intercessory prayer for the family. Hallelujah. Our brother, Brian, is going to intercede at this time on behalf oh, of the family. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Prayer, please. Prayer. Jesus. Prayer. 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 Almighty God, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We take time out to honor you, to love you, because you are God. There is none like you, nor can be compared even like unto you. You are great among us, and greatly to be praised. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, O God, for your divine presence here. We thank you, Almighty God, for the life of Brother Turner. One whom you have called, O oh God, away from us. Lord, we understand that the loss that has taken place and many hearts are broken, Almighty God. Many hearts are crying out because of the fellowship that we once experienced. And even now, Almighty God, I place every family member in your hands. I ask, Lord, that you will comfort those who mourn. Give beautiful ashes. Give the oil of joy for mourning. And the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Almighty God, touch every broken heart. Because you are the one who mend all broken pieces. There is nothing too hard for you to do. So I pray today, God, that you will strengthen your people. Oh God, and cause your people to trust in you. Oh God, knowing that you never fail. Oh God, before one of your words pass, heaven and earth will pass away. So do it again, God. Do it again. Do it again. In the name of Jesus, Almighty oh God. And even now, God, I pray today, oh God, that your God will minister to every need right now. In the name of Jesus, Almighty God. We stand on your word today, for you are faithful in all of your ways. So we thank you, Lord, for every family member. And as we leave here today, Lord, I pray that the life of Brother Turner, oh God, will be a memory to all of us. And we all will seek to follow in his footsteps. So bless each and every one now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Shall we praise the Lord? Amen. We are coming right down on the wire. Family members, uh, I, I, I want the family members to lead us in paying tribute in a very nice way to Brother Turner. Therefore, if we say prior time, we expect everybody to respond to that. If it's one, if it's one thing about us as Jamaican, all when we know about church, when prior time we give respect to that. And we're not busy with even who are prayer. We just busy with who we must talk to. All right. So please, and let me say as we're coming down, um, family members, we know we don't know what you're going through. We assume because not even if you're a daughter and son. You don't know what each other are going through because nobody knows what anybody feels. But we assume, but one thing we can say to you, rest assured that when the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, it's not really was not really talking about the good times when everything is all right. It was talking about moments like these. Amen. So you are well comforted, he's there. And he has already assigned angels to watch over you. And he said that they shall bear you up in their arms. Meaning that there are times when you don't know how you're going to make it. But you are carried by angels. Rest assured that God is faithful. And he will never leave you. Neither will he forsake you. There's a scripture to be read. No name is there. And in the interest of time, if you will allow me, I will read it. Yes, and after we are through reading that scripture, then we are going to go back to Brother Palmer, who is going to lead from here in the committal. It is a uh, first Thessalonians 4, 13 
to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the here, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. God bless you, keep you. At this time, Brother Palmer again. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall we praise the Lord one more time? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have come to a segment where we will be finally, finally, Taking away the remains of Brother Ferdinand. Where are they? The five Because they have to. While they are doing that, we, we can go back to the M. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. Sing his mercy. In the mansion. Right and blessed. Thank you. 
Somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord. Somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord. Somebody lift your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise. God, you want to take, take picture? Do it now. For as soon as the casket is closed, you can only take a peek. You can't see him again. You will not see him again in this life, in the flesh. But if you live, you shall be with him in the resurrection morning. Stand by everybody for the committal. This is where we commit his body to the ground finally. And this is where you have a chance to say farewell. Farewell. This hour of prayer. For as much. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God. In his wise providence. To take out of this world the soul of our deceased brother. We therefore now commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We say amen. 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 May the Lord bless him and keep him. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon him and also to be gracious unto him. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon him and give him eternal peace in Jesus' name. And we say good night. Somebody's going to sing a song? Somebody's going to sing something? Okay. If you miss me, sing now. Don't come searching. Stop your hands.
Trump.